Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody glad you're in church this morning? Are you? Appreciate everybody that prayed for us. Uh, the meetings went well, as we said, and um, it's just such a privilege to be in the service of the Lord. And everybody that <clears throat> helped send us, you know, has a part. And everybody that got helped or healed or set free or blessed, aren't you glad to hear these good testimonies? Yes. People saying they were down, they were troubled, they were upset, they were sick, but they, uh, they got a hold of the Lord and He healed them. Mm -mm -mm. Sure does beat the alternative, doesn't it? Yes. Well, we believe in for it just to increase. If you would turn to John, please, this morning, the 15th chapter, if you didn't bring a Bible with you, the ushers have extra Bibles. Be glad to let you use one of ours. John 15. John 15. We begin last week on a new series we're calling Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. And this is our uh, text passage right here in the 15th chapter of John. Jesus is speaking. He said, verse 1, I am the true vine. Who's the vine? Jesus is the vine. And my father is the husbandman. He is the uh, vineyard tender, the farmer. Every branch in me, how many? Everyone that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now think about this. What good is a branch that bears no fruit? That was a little quiet. Well, it must not be much good if he removes them. Hmm? Branches are supposed to bear fruit. Right? And as we touched on last week, the Lord is very interested in us bearing fruit. Keep reading, you'll see. He said, now you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Skip down to verse 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Thank you, Lord. Does the Lord expect fruit yes. out of us, the branches? Yes. He does. He does. Is it okay to be barren no. and fruitless, no. not produce any fruit? That's not okay. It's not okay. Are we thinking about bearing fruit? Yes. Are we aware of how much fruit we're bearing? Do we have a desire? To, to produce more. What kind of fruit are we even talking about? <laughs> do we need some instruction and revelation in these areas? Do, do we need some mind renewal? Do we need some expansion? Yes, we do. You can see why the Lord would have us on this. And so uh, I would ask you to be believing with me right now. And for the duration of the series. That we find out what this means. And we understand it. And we see ourselves in the context of this. I mean, just, just knowing what we see right now, I don't want to be barren. Amen. Do you? Yes, sir. Every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he said is removed. And if it's, if it's removed, it withers. Yes, sir. 
Right? Yes. Obviously. But every branch that is bearing fruit, it gets purged or pruned. Yes. Why? So that it bear more fruit, much fruit. What's his will? He said, I, why did he call us? Why did he choose us? Why did he ordain us? That we would go forth and bring fruit, yes. much fruit. Yes. And fruit that remains. Fruit that remains is spiritual fruit, eternal fruit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say it out loud. I want to bear fruit. I want to bear more fruit. Much fruit. Fruit that remains. Well, the Bible said that's what glorifies God, is us bearing this fruit. Now, uh, you'll go over, excuse me, to 1 Corinthians 3, please. 1 Corinthians 3. And uh, let's remind ourselves of what is going on right now, what's coming up in the future. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 6 says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Thank you, Lord. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, verse 7, God gives the increase. What kind of increase are we talking about? What is the increase? It's fruit. Hmm? He's talking about a vineyard. He's talking about a garden. When God increases, it's the increase of the plants. That's the fruit. Verse 9, for you are laborers together with God. It's important that we keep this in our minds straight. The Lord didn't call us to just go do a bunch of things for him. People miss it trying to do this. We're, we're called to labor together with him, working with him. I know in my, my few years in the ministry, people that have endeavored to help me, that's been an issue over and over again, you know. Uh, a lot of times people, they mean well, but they get ahead of you. They're wanting to do this for you, wanting to do that for you, wanting to take it off of you. Well, that can be a problem, though. I want somebody that will work with me. Amen. Hmm? People do this with the Lord all the time. They, you know, they see an opportunity, so they just take off. They see a need, so they just take off. We're not to be led by needs. We're not to be led by opportunities. We're not to just try to do everything we can for the Lord. I know that sounds funny, but am I reading scripture here? What are we to do? We need to work with him, closely with him. Do what he says. Don't add to. Don't take from. Don't change. Right? Right? Because you're never going to have a better idea Amen. than him. Amen. Right? <laughs> we are called to be laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. According to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another builds thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's using two examples uh, simultaneously, that of a house built on the foundation and that of a vineyard or a farm, branches connected to the vine. And he said, uh, verse 12, Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. 
If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Put that up, please, in the English Standard Version, the ESV, in verse uh, uh, 12. We'll just read it in that, verse 12. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, next verse, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it. There's a day coming because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Next verse. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives the fire, he will receive a reward. Verse 15. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. What kind of loss? What, what kind of loss? Though he himself will be saved. Now this is a strong reminder that we're not saved by our works. Right? No, no. It's not time. This is not determining whether you're going to be saved or not. This determines whether you're going to be rewarded or not. And a lot of people try to act like, well, you know, man, if I can just get in. <laughs> I, I'm not so concerned about reward. You say that now. But you don't know what it'll be like. No. We're talking about eternal reward that affects your place in the, in the kingdom of God. Now, suffer so loss, what kind of loss? Loss of reward, obviously, but then loss of everything you put into it. There are going to be things that people built and put their blood, sweat, and tears, and money in for 40 years. And the fire's going to try it, and the whole thing's going to go up in smoke. And that means all the work they put into it and the money was for nothing. Now, they'll still be saved, but it was in vain, everything that they did in that area. Keep reading. Let's read that verse again. Put it up for us, please. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only uh, as through fire. So when the Lord is talking about us bearing fruit, go with me over to uh, Galatians, if you would, while I'm talking. If he's talking about us bearing fruit, it's this fruit that remains. Fruit that remains. In uh, Galatians 6 and verse 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life what? This is eternal. This is fruit that remains. Jesus said, I believe it's in John 6, he said the flesh, uh, it's, it's the Spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Now we, you know, most people need a wake-up call. As to what's going on. People get up. They get ready. They go to work. They go to school. They come back. They clean their house. They cut the grass. They get the supper ready. And they get up tomorrow and do the same thing. And act like we're going to do this forever. We're not. I said we're not. This is, this is very temporary. And the time we have down here. Is so precious. And what we're doing with it is going to be judged in that day that he referred to. If you slipped out of your body right now, all you got to do is quit breathing. Everybody in here this morning? Go, oh boy, I don't know if I like this message or not. Oh yeah, it's good. Hang in here. <laughs> but it, it does touch on a point. People like to pretend. People want to pretend. 
But we need a wake up call. Yes. Don't we? Yes. We do not, If you slipped out of your body right now, all you got to do is quit breathing. And it doesn't take long. And you're gone. And you believe in the Lord. You're born again. You're saved. You go to be with Jesus. But not long there's coming the day when everything you've done in your life from now back is going to be judged by the fire. How much of what you've done will remain after the fire? We need to think about it. Everything you've done, your life's work, everything is going to be tried, tested by the fire of God. If it was done just by fleshly whim or some other unprofitable reason, it'll just be consumed. It'll go up in smoke. And I don't care if you spent 20 years and $20 million on it, it's good for nothing. You just lost that. Other things that you did by faith with the right heart, and the Lord directed you to do it, and you did it in the Spirit, the fire will pass over it, but when it's passed, it'll be gleaming brighter than it was before, like gold, like silver, like precious jewels. And it will remain forever throughout eternity, and you will be rewarded. And your time and effort and money that you spent on it will not have been in vain. It was fruitful. It was valuable and it remains. Glory to God. Anybody interested in learning more about this now? Well, if that's true, thank God we still got some time maybe. Right? I mean, if previous years hadn't been so fruitful, well, the Lord's merciful and gracious. And as long as there's breath and time, there's hope. And... uh, I believe one of the big reasons the Lord has us on this topic right now is he wants to teach us. Every branch that is not bearing fruit needs to get to bearing fruit in a hurry. Lest it be withered, right, and cut off. But every branch, you know, not to say we don't have any fruit, we have some fruit. The fact that you and I are here together this morning having a service, that's some fruit, right? And a lot of good things have been going on, but what's the Lord's will for us? Purge us, prune us. What does that mean? Well, I don't care how great the the peach tree is or the vineyard is, uh, the best of trees still needs to be trimmed, doesn't it? The dead stuff needs to be trimmed off. It needs to be trimmed up, trimmed off. Why? So that it can put forth new branches and it can become even more fruitful. Well, the Lord wants to help us trim the dead stuff off. Trim all the dead junk off that's hindering us, that's wasting our resources, that's holding us back. Why? So that we can shoot out new branches. Hey! (laughs) New branches. I'm excited about new branches. (laughs) New branches that'll produce even more fruit and that fruit in the day to come will pass the fire and remain and abide forever. Can you say amen? Can you say glory to God? Have you read Ecclesiastes? A lot of people don't care for it. (laughs) Because half of it is vanity, vanity. It's all vanity. People go, man, that's depressing. (laughs) No, listen, who did God use to pin it? Solomon, the man he gave such wisdom to. Right? What what was the wisdom being revealed? He talked about, I did this, and I built this, and I planted that, and I made that, and I bought this, and then I said, vanity. What good is it? Because tomorrow this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and what's the point? The wiser one becomes in the wisdom of God, you learn to discern between what's important and what's not important. What's worth doing and what's not worth doing. Are y'all with me, friends? And I believe God in this time of our, in this season of the church and the family, he's imparting to us his wisdom. He's waking us up. He's enlightening us. 
See, there's uh, probably people that should be in the service right now. That's not because they spent all night watching TV or on the internet or some foolish thing. They, they wasted their time on something unprofitable and now they're missing something that is fruitful and would make them fruitful. So that makes them foolish to not know what's valuable and what's worthless. We've got the spirit of wisdom in us, don't we? We've got the word of wisdom given to us. And the Lord is imparting, and if we'll listen and we'll open ourselves up, he'll trim us up. I said he'll trim us up. And he'll show us in these days and weeks and months to come, he'll show us that's a waste of your time. That's a waste of precious time you'll never get. You just need to get, get rid of that. Just get out of that. This is good. Spend more time on this. Yeah. Invest into this. Change this. Yeah. Add to this. Reduce this. Yes. The wisdom of God, the scripture said, is profitable to direct. Yes, profitable. Glory to God. Fruitful. You. Makes you fruitful. Go back to the text in John 15, please. Now we see right here in the text the greatest key to fruitfulness. John 15 John 15 and verse 4 Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it does what? Abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man do what? Abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein, in other words, in this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. What was a recurring thought? Abide, 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 abiding in him and his words abiding in you. Abide. This is how will be fruitful and more fruitful. What does it mean? The word abide simply means stay. Stay. It's also translated remain, dwell, continue, but probably one of the most accurate and simplest is just stay. Read it again like that. Inserting the word stay in there. Verse 4. Stay in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it does what? It stays in the vine. No more can you, except you stay in me. Stay. Stay. Well, if the Lord tells you to stay, what do you suppose the enemy would tempt you to do? Stay in me. Stay what? Stay hooked. Stay joined. Stay connected. Stay. The nature of the flesh is impatience. Have you found this out? And the more you yield to the flesh, the more impatient you will be. Flighty. Here, there, here, there. And you can see the, the spirit of this world feeds that. I mean, we're getting more and more and more channels on TV. More and more and more options on the internet. I mean, it's just, and so if, you, if, if that's all you do, you're there for 3.2 seconds and think, man, this is slow. Next, <laughs> next, here, there, here, there, flicking around. Flighty. That is not staying. Y'all with me, friends? 
And if you live like that, you will not be fruitful. You will be wasting your time and energies and resources. With the Lord, you know, you have to learn to be still and see and know that he is God and to wait on the Lord and he'll renew your strength. Anybody interested in this this morning? Somebody say wait, wait. and stay. One of the ways that word abide is used frequently in the Greek is just like if somebody came to your house for a visit and uh, they get ready to go and you say, no, why don't you just stay? <laughs> Y'all stay, stay the night. Stay the week with us. Just stay. That's what it is. Stay instead of what? Instead of going. Instead of leaving. And what you and I must do in order to be fruitful is stay connected in continuous communion with Him. Say it out loud, continuous communion. Say it again, continuous communion. Now, uh, a lot of Christians have discovered that they could come to church and they could worship the Lord and experience His presence and be aware of Him for a few moments, but then they leave and get back into the real world <laughs> and life and really unhook. I said unhook. Yes. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is. Stay. There you go. Stay. What? Stay. Visits me? No. Huh? Stay. Stayed. Stayed. What is stayed? Oh, friend, it is a glorious reality that you cannot just touch the Lord for a few moments during worship or during service on Sunday. But you can be aware with him, aware of him, I should say, and commune with him all day and all night. <laughs> I'm not talking about you have to be on your knees, praying at work, driving down the road, doing stuff. You can be continuously aware of and communing with him and stay. Oh, hallelujah. Stay in him and his words can stay in your thinking and in your mind and in your heart and in your mouth. And oh, friend, if you'll do that, then you'll be walking with him. <laughs> every day and every night, walking with him continuous communion with him. And if you do that, he will be continuously imparting his wisdom to you. He'll be showing you, yes, go this way. No, don't go that way. Stop. Do more of this. Cut that out. Hmm? You're not just living your own life, being your own Lord. You're walking with him. You're communing with him. Oh, friends. This is the life. This is the way to make every minute count and not waste your precious life here on the earth, but do things that matter and live in a way that matters. And in that day, that day that's coming, when your works are tried, they'll be shown. That you, just, you didn't just do it off the top of your head. You did it because he directed you to. And since he directed you to, there's spiritual eternal value in it. Amen. And it'll pass, when the fire's pass, it'll still be standing there gleaming. And you didn't waste your time and you didn't waste your energy and you didn't waste your money and your opportunities. Amen. You were fruitful and your fruit remains. For in every morning when we get up, we have a limited amount 
of time, energy, opportunity, money, resources. And the enemy would tempt us to waste it, wouldn't he? He's there to lead us astray through our flesh if we'll follow it. We live in a generation where millions are chronically tired, chronically fatigued. People blame it on any number of things. People try to act like, well, you know, our, our generation is so different and our kids have to deal with things that we never had to, to deal with and baloney. Uh-uh. That's an excuse to not live to a high standard. Mm-mm. I mean, it doesn't make that much difference whether it's crank or moonshine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the principle is the same. Human nature's always been the same. Human sexuality is the same. The devil's still using the same tricks and temptations, and thank God, God's the same. It's a matter of the choices we make. You see this, parents impatient with their kids and no time for them and making all kind of excuses, but the reason is they spent four hours playing some dumb game on the computer. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. They, they used up their energies in this kind of entertainment. or hub, and, and, and friend, don't kid yourself. You are burning patience. You are using it. When you're dealing with this thing, you're using your energies and if when you use it all up and then you need it over here, you're not going to have it. And that's the enemy's plan. Amen. Friend, if we would be wise, if we'd let the Lord lead us, we'd, we'd purge our life. Hmm? I got four or five people with me. We, we would cut stuff off. I know your flesh wants to do it, but that's flesh. You got to put your flesh under Cut this off and change that. And in a few days, yeah. your energy level would just come right up here. Your patience level would be up here. And you'd be ready and strong and able to do the things that matter. Yeah. The things that count. Yes. To be fruitful. Yeah. What, what are we doing? What are we spending our days at? Is it going to pass the test of fire? Is it all going to go up in smoke? Is it all going to be burnt? We'll be saved, but we'll lose everything that we, we did in that area. No, friend. Are you still alive? Take a breath. Let me see. Huh? <laughs> see, I'm still here. So it's possible. You could have some more opportunity to do some things that count. Do some things that matter. Can you say amen? Are you interested in this at all? Somebody say abide. abide. Say it again, abide. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Abide in me, he said. Abide, stay, continue. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians, please. The, well, on your way there, stop by 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1. People say, I'm, I'm called to do this. I'm called to do that. Let me remind you of your first call, which is above all. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. 1 Corinthians 1 9, what does it say? God is faithful, by whom ye were called. Called to what? Unto the fellowship. Fellowship. Of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. All the great works, the mighty deeds and signs and wonders that happened in Jesus' ministry were the product of his personal fellowship with the Father. Weren't they? Did he waste his life? On goofy stuff and 
fleshly stuff. No, he walked with the Father. He, he prayed, he communed, and he knew what to do every day. He knew go here and preach there and don't go there, and didn't he? He knew. He knew. Uh, hold your place there and go to 1 John. Somebody say he knew. Can you know? Why are people wasting their time and their life and their resources? They either don't know or they are ignoring what they know. 1 John 2 and verse 20. What does it say? But you have an unction, that's the word for anointing, from the Holy One, and what? You what? You know. All things. Did Jesus operate this way? Did he operate in this knowing? I mean, go, go through sometimes again and read the gospel accounts and see it in operation. They'd come to him and say, Master, they're saying, come over here. And they, he said, no, I've got to go over there. How, how, how'd he know that? Now remember, he's emptied himself and laid aside his mighty weight and power and glory as God, Philippians tells us. He's operating as a man. How did, how did he know that? Well, he knew it, obviously, same way we would know it, by the unction, yes. by the anointing. Yes. I've operated in, in varying degrees of this, just in my few years of walking with the Lord. And I can't say I've operated in the highest levels all the time, but there have been times that from the time I got up in the morning, I just knew. It was just so clear and plain to me. I just knew what to do and what not to do and how long and where and when and other things that came up. I just knew, no, don't do that. Don't get involved with that. Just knew. Just knew. You know, one of the most tormenting things in life is not knowing. Being confused. Right? And you don't have to live that way. That's a result. That darkness is the result of withering that comes from not being connected, not staying in the vine, trying to do things on your own, being disconnected. Come on, think about it. The vine must what to the, uh, excuse me, the branch must, must what with the vine? It must abide, it must stay. You can't just take the branch out and hold it up against the vine for 15 minutes. <laughs> and go, okay, but that ought to be good enough. And then tomorrow, no fruit. What's the deal? What's the deal? We better hold it up 30 minutes, all right? Hold it on to the vine. No, help me out. What's got to happen? It's got to stay. It's got to stay joined. It's got to stay Connected. Amen. Elsewise, it withers up. It dries up. No fruit. Amen. No life. And so people have tried to do that. They've tried to come to church and connect for a little while and then unhook and go and do their own thing for five or six days and then come back and hook for a few minutes. No, no. That's obviously not working. <laughs> What must we do if we're going to be bear real fruit? If our life's going to matter, we got to stay joined, stay hooked, stay connected. Like we've already said, if the Lord tells you that and that's vital, well, then what's the enemy going to do? He's going to do everything he can to sever that connection, isn't he? Whatever he can do. To get you mad, get you upset, get you confused, get you hurt, whatever the case, so that you unhook. Unhook. And old friend, when you do, you're in trouble now. Because you, you separated yourself from the flow of light and life, and all you're going to have is dryness and deadness and withering and fruitlessness. Somebody said out loud, I got to stay hooked. I got to stay connected. I have to abide in him and his words abide. Stay in me. 
They got to stay in you. You don't just, you know, hook to it for a few minutes. You got to stay there. That will keep him in perfect peace. That sounds like you're operating in knowing right there, does I mean? Because if you don't know and you're confused, you're not going to be in perfect peace. Thou keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. 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 I know what one day I was, this has been 20, probably five years ago, I was ministering to this lady who had been in and out of mental institutions for years and was just in a terrible shape and condition. And she wound up there at the healing school at Brother Hagin's ministry. And I was endeavoring to minister to her. And the Lord led me to take her to Joshua where he told him, you'll meditate in this word night and day. Right? And I began to try to share that with her. And just, she just interrupted me. She said, you can't do that. You can't. Now, a lot of other people thought it. They just didn't say it. They, you, you can't keep your mind on the Lord all night and all day. I said, well, two things, sister. I said, one, the Lord must have believed you could because he told you to. Right? He wouldn't have told us to do so. He would have known if we couldn't do it. Wouldn't he? So just him telling us to do it proves we can do it because he would know. I said, secondly, it's not a matter of whether or not you can keep your mind on something night and day. You're already keeping your mind on something night and day. And I went on to tell her, and obviously the wrong thing. Because keeping your mind stayed on him is not sending you to the mental institution. Are y'all with me now? Because if you kept your mind stayed on him, what did he say? He would keep you in perfect peace. So what are people doing? To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. And peace, what are people doing? They're unhooking. I'm talking about church going people. But they're unhooking their mind from him and they're trying, like what we were saying, they're trying to hold the branch up against the vine for a few minutes on Sunday and think, oh, that's it, we'll bear a lot of fruit now. No, you won't. No, you won't. We've got to stay. Somebody say stay. Stay. we got to stay. Can you, can you keep your mind on him yes. all night and all day? Yes, yes, you can. While you're at work, while you're at school, why he wants to be in every part of your life, yes. doesn't he? Yes. You can look inside you while you're doing little things and say, Lord, show me, you know everything. Show me how to do this the right way. He'll show you the, how, to, how to save whole days out of your life. Yes. He'll show you, don't do that. Oh, friends, are you listening to me? You'll go to do something, and, 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 and normally you'd have just blared right through it, and the Lord said, no, he'll, he'll check you. Wait. And you go, oh. And just that right there could have saved you a lawsuit, $250,000, days out of your life and frustration, just, just right there. How many things, if people had just paused just a minute and followed him, their leg wouldn't have got broke? They wouldn't have had that car wreck. Amen. Amen. Are you listening, friends? Yes. And come on, think about all that time, all that energy, all that suffering, all that problem. Was that fruitful? Was that profitable? Are you going to get a reward for that in the day to come? No. no. Well, why wasn't it avoided? Because you were unhooked. Because you were making your own decisions. You were running the show. Can we walk with him? Yes. Can we? Yes. Can we stay connected to him? Can we enjoy continuous communion with him? Can we be led by him, by his Holy Spirit, even in the small affairs of life? Can we? Can we? If we'll follow him and do what he directs, Will that cut off the dead stuff and, and the wasted stuff and the fleshly unfruitful stuff? And will it direct us to do things that matter and things that count and not waste our precious days and our resources? And here's something that we'll get to eventually. If you learn to be a better steward with what you have right now, you know what he'll do? He will give you more. 
more. He will give you things that will help you redeem the time and save whole days out of your month. He'll give you more money, more ability, more opportunity. But what do you need more for to just waste it? To just blow it. You don't need more. I know uh, years ago, I had the privilege of ministering in Brother Hagin's healing school, like I said previously. And I knew the anointing is what destroys the yokes and removes the burdens. And so the stronger the anointing, the better results. And so I was seeking the Lord earnestly. Oh, Lord, I, I want more anointing. I want a stronger anointing when we minister, when we preach and teach, when we lay hands on people. Oh, God, give me more. Give me more. Because I saw other people, you know, that had a stronger, strong anointing. And I thought, well, Lord, that's what we need. That's what's going to get the job done. Not me, but the anointing. And so, man, I prayed and sought the Lord. I fasted. I, I persevered. And one day, laying in the floor with my nose in the carpet, saying for the thousandth time, Oh, God, give me more anointing. Give me more anointing. As he said, he spoke to my heart. I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside me. He said, Faithfulness, Keith. Faithfulness. I thought, Oh, Lord, that's good. I know that's good. But you know what I'd really like is more anointing. <laughs> Of course, I know you'd have been sharper than that, but <laughs> more anointing. And he, he said to me, faithfulness, Keith, faithfulness. I thought, great, I'm sure that means more than I'm getting. Uh, sure would like to have some more anointing. He said, faithfulness, Keith, faithfulness. Then he said this to me. Again, I'm not hearing an audible voice, but how many know he'll speak to you inside you? The Bible talks about the still, small voice. And, and again, we're talking about just knowing things. Right? Yes. You have an unction of the Holy One, and by that anointing, you what? You, you know. You just know. And uh, he said to me, he said, Keith, son, all of my children, when they're filled with the Spirit, receive an anointing. All of them, every one. Is that true or not? Yes. You shall receive power. Yes. Right? After the Holy Ghost has come on, and you'll be witnesses. It's a power, power anointing to be a witness. He said, all of my children receive an anointing when they're filled with the Spirit. He said, many of them have done nothing with that anointing. Why would they need more? I didn't have a good answer for that. He said, son, do something with what you have and I'll give you more. Be faithful. So I began to do everything, I'd, I'd make a big deal. I, I knew my anointing was, seemed small compared to some other people, but hey, it's what God gave me, Amen. right? Amen. And I know my key to having increase is me doing something with it. And so I'd talk about it and I'd pray about it. I'd confess it over myself and do what I could with it. And sure enough, in just a few months, begin to increase. And a year or two after that, here came another increase. And then four or five years after that, a much more increase. Be faithful with what you have. That means your time, your money, your revelation, your opportunities, everything. Be fa but what if you're wasting what you got? Well, what do you need more for? You just waste that too. Right? God's big on stewardship. Did you know that? He's big on stewardship. And if you're faithful with the little, what will he do? He will give you more. He'll increase you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. You still in 1 John? Look at the 20, what is the 27th verse there, I guess it is. But the anointing which you have received of him, what does it do? What does it do? It stays in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't need the ministry gifts to teach you and, and minister to you, preach to you. What it does mean, you don't have to go to somebody and say, tell me what to do. You know, what, how do I make this decision? Where do I go on this? How do I know? You've got the anointing that stays in you 24-7. And we've already read in that previous verse in the same chapter here, that anointing causes you to know, doesn't it? Yes, know all things that you need to know. That as that same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall what? Abide 
stay in him. Oh, friend, are you getting a picture of this life? This is the same kind of life Jesus lived. This is exactly how he walked. He'd get up in the morning and he was not confused about what he was supposed to do that day. How many believe Jesus never wasted a day? He never wasted a day. He never wasted an offering. He never wasted an opportunity. He was led. Why? He'd get up and sometimes other people would try to sway him and say, Lord, they want you to go over here. And they want you. He said, no, I can't do that. I got to go over here. How did he know that? He just knew. I said he knew by the unction, by the anointing that is within him. And so he was led by the Spirit. And the Spirit was directing him to be fruitful and profitable every part of his day, everything that he said. He, how many believe he never wasted? One, he never went to the wrong place and wasted that day. Amen. He never did. He never wasted time with somebody that wouldn't receive it anyway. That's why sometimes he wouldn't even talk to people. You remember that? He wouldn't even talk. Why? Well, see, the Holy Ghost would know whether they're going to listen or whether they're not. And even though you don't know in your head, he will lead you not to waste precious time and energy because, friend, we don't have much of it. You and I are going to look up in just a few breaths and days. We're out of here. We're out of here. Not much time at all. Let's be redeeming of the time. Let's allow him to lead us and make every day count and make everything we do count. I believe, I'm confident that God is bringing this church, bringing this family, bringing us into the greatest time of fruitfulness that we have ever had. When he says best shape of your life, that's not just talking about some money in an account. I believe that we'll get to the place where we'll reach more people in a week than we used to reach in a year. Come on, are you listening? Oh! Does that make you happy? We... More people will get help in a week than you used to get help in six months. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, so be it, so be it, so be it. It'll never come by me and you just putting our heads together and working hard and trying to come up with ideas. It'll never come that way. People try it, it just won't. Oh, but God has a plan. I said, he has a plan. And if we'll follow him, He'll lead us step by step into greater fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody.